The Apollo capsule, as it moves slowly towards its final stage, that of mating with the Saturn rocket. This was but a few days ago, when at Cape Kennedy, hopes were centered on a day, February the 21st. But that was to be the beginning of the 14-day flight for a three-man spaceship, a prelude to man's landing on the moon. At the top of Saturn, the capsule would be just over 200 feet from the ground. At all stages, check upon check was made. So far, space had cost no American lives. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Grissom, Gus to all America, was to be the skipper of the capsule. He was 40, with two children. Lieutenant Colonel White, Ed White. He was the first American to walk in space. He also had two children. Chaffee, White and Grissom, the Apollo crew. Roger Chaffee had never flown in space, unlike Gus Grissom, who had become a veteran of the unknown, and Ed White, known to all the world. Many hours those three had spent in a capsule simulator. Now they took their places in Apollo itself to become completely familiar with their spaceship before starting a trial countdown. How few of us ever think of the enormous wealth of knowledge and the training behind the making of astronauts. For the Moon Project as a whole mobilizes America's finest scientific and engineering brains. For all that, something failed. Not at the moments of highest danger, the blast off, or in outer space, or on re-entering our atmosphere, but on Earth, in the capsule. In the control center, on closed circuit TV and by instruments, complete contact with the capsule was maintained. With such brilliant achievements already to the credit of astronauts, an accident before blast-off was unthinkable. Eighteen months ago, Ed White thrilled the world by his walk in space. Ed White was on the fringe of another triumph. Grissom, White and Chaffee died. Roger Chaffee was not to fly in space. Ed White leaves fame behind. Three courageous men have shown that there is no easy road from Earth to the stars.